Brokers Alliance and the National Insurance Clearinghouse present the Business Insurance Zone, a Bravo video event. Broadcasting in HD 1080p on Vimeo, YouTube, the Insurance News Net, Agent Navigator, BrokersAlliance.com, and on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and the Insurance Forum. And now your host, the Wizard of the Biz, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that spotlights insurance in your practice. Keep you up to speed on insurance news and products. Features insurance strategies from top advisors. Get in the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. Well, our email address is thebiz at brokersalliance.com, and you can call us at 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, for all your quotes and questions, whether it's life, DI, LTC, annuities, or even pension group plans. We quote it all. Just go ahead and call us. And remember, I'm not a tax advisor or a legal advisor, so before moving forward with any of the strategies you hear on our show, don't forget to talk to your CPA or attorney, and if you're with a broker-dealer, of course, your compliance officer. Well, we've been interviewing several shows with Marcy Pruitt, head of our division in disability. Welcome back to our show. Thank you. And Marcy's been on our show. This is, I think, our fifth time on our show. Plus, she's also been on our vignettes, our educational vignettes, which we have on Agent Navigator, insurance, the Insurance Forum, some of our other channels. And what I really like about in a show format like this is we can talk about the things that we know that our agents want to talk about. And I love the whole idea of paycheck protection for individual, for corporate, but today we're gonna to kind of do something that honestly I forgot about. You know, this business overhead, you know, this disability, I, I know I pay myself, now I'm covering overhead, my actual expenses for a business. That's right, that is the risk I that- mean, That sounds so weird though. <laughs> Why is that? Well, because more, well, no, wait a minute, I ask the questions on this show. <laughs> no. uh, but, well, the reason it is because when I think of insurance, I think it has to be a person. But when we talk about business overhead, we're talking about the actual expense loads of a business, and we could there's we could cover that in case of a disability. That's right. Well, if a business owner were to become disabled and the doors close, obviously that could shut the business down, similar to insuring the risk for fire and theft and you know the building itself and the contents, but you're insuring the business owner's ability to provide and in, in, uh, increase revenue for the firm. So when I think of expense loads, does that mean just the utility bills, the rent, and so forth, not covering other employees? What, is, what it, does it cover? It essentially covers all fixed operating expenses of the business, and it would cover the staff employee salaries, not the business owner, or typically anyone performing the same duties as the business owner. You know, if they wanted, they could get their own personal DI to cover that That's issue. right. Okay, so excluding the business owner, right correct all right excluding them we could be covering all fixed costs and some of those fixed costs i mean are you including the the actual salaries of the employees yes salaries of the employees the, the fica match that we that the business has an yes, obligation full to payroll including what about uh, the, the, what if they're doing uh, what if our business supports the medical insurance absolutely the health insurance dental the life insurance and all benefits really except for the owner well the owner the malpractice insurance the property and casualty premiums but just not the personal health insurance or mm -hmm. life insurance or a pension plan possibly sure. that type of thing for the owner only would not be covered well when i think about that that sounds great what kind of is it expensive? Is it? It's not going by age now, right? It does go by age. Oh, it's it your does. Occupation and your age are the two drivers of the premium for business overhead. Yes. See now, see that sounds to me that's hard to grasp because I keep thinking, well, well, one's an expense, and why would that be tied to my age? Well, it's a reimbursable contract, unlike an indemnity mm -hmm. with an individual policy. It is a reimbursable contract for your share as a business owner of the operating expenses. The, to develop the premium, it is still based on your duties and mm -hmm. your age, and and also whether you're male or female. Okay, so if if I want to cover all my fixed expenses, as you suggested, and it's by age, could I do it with a younger owner <laughs> to keep it cheaper or no? For, for the younger owner's share of the business. So That's, if it's a situation mm -hmm. where there's two owners, 50-50, and the expenses ran 10000 a month, each owner could insure mm -hmm. for 5000 now, when you look at this, let's just take a typical, I'm thinking of the boilerplate, I'm so used to quoting mortality products, right. but like let's say you've got a 45 or so, what, what's the ratio for every you know, $1,000 of fixed expenses I want to cover, what do I have to kind of put out? I know that's kind of a without an actual yeah, table, it's, but it's hard. Is, it, um, is it five to one? Is it 
well, seven to one? It's less expensive than individual disability than mm -hmm. paycheck protection mm -hmm. because that is designed to cover you to age 67 or even lifetime. Business overhead will typically insure for 12 months, 18 months, or up to 24 months. So the top is 24. Right. And what's what are the kind of elimination periods? Is there elimination periods for this kind They're of insurance? They're much shorter than individuals. So it's a usually a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day elimination period. And when you see that sold, uh, is, is, is business overhead pretty hot as an item to sell? I think it's a great door opener because, uh, again, most people think, well, a disability won't happen to me, or if it does, the business will take care of me. Mm -hmm. The business will provide it revenue, and, and you know, I'll mm -hmm. continue to earn a paycheck. Well, how long can that revenue continue if the business owner is disabled and unable to you know, drive the business? So let's just say the typical sale, um, if I had this, would they, is a typical one about a year or no, they go out to the full 24 months from a duration point? I really see a shorter benefit because again, you it's it's designed not to sustain the business forever. It's to mm -hmm. designed to allow the business owner to get back on their feet and come back to work or have a viable business to sell. So if you do recover or sell the business prior to 24 months, for example, then the the policy would end. Mm -hmm. So typically a year, maybe 18 months, is a duration that is a realistic reimbursable period, but, you know, again, before they're able mm -hmm. to come back to the business. I mean, how many business owners for two years would sit out there and, you know, not come back to the business or have mm -hmm. not sold it by that point? Yeah, they'd, want, they'd be losing market share, so right. they'd want to re-enter as soon as possible. When I look at... Um, this kind of insurance, which is really a strange adjunct to everything we've talked about in previous shows, because it's it's dealing in expenses, and you just named quite a list. Do you have an already prepared list for, we do. for our uh, producers? We have a worksheet that we can hand out, and again, you keep in mind it's reimbursable, so you really don't want to over-insure, but mm -hmm. rent, utilities, um, again, mm -hmm. the cost of the staffing, supplies, uh, um, even depreciation, student and that's loans. all on this list they're correct so if you want this list just go ahead and contact marcy you can either write her marcy at brokersalliance.com that's m-a-r-c-y and if you want to call her direct as i always do on the mm -hmm. telephone 1-800-290-7226 her extension 126 and don't forget you can always jump out to our website www.brokersalliance.com so we can get this list we have a pretty good idea we can walk in how do I open up the discussion? Because this is really a good can opener, a first contact interview, so to speak. Right. So how do I open up with this? Well, I mean, there are, you know, the simple ways. Business owners, you know, when's the last time you took a vacation? If you were forced to take a vacation tomorrow, how long could the business run itself? Mm -hmm. And again, most business owners think the business can support itself, yet when when's the last time they took a six-month or a year vacation? Mm -hmm. So to really have this in place, which which funds all of the operating expenses, including all the other policies that have already been sold. So it really can protect you so the business owner doesn't lapse everything else you've sold, mm -hmm. yet providing a income you know, so to maintain really, the business. So really, it does everything except the owner's personal disability and benefits. Correct. So everything else is on the table. Yes, there is. And again, um, the anybody performing let's say you had two doctors uh, the other physician's salary would not be covered either but you can either it's built in or some carriers have a rider where it provides a substitute salary expense benefit so you can bring someone mm -hmm. in especially for a sole proprietor bring someone in to see patients clients and you know whether it's a dentist again medical office because your staff can't typically do that so it allows someone to come in and continue to bring and the contract pays, in. For, pays for that right what carriers do you see are players in this overhead, business overhead DI? In the traditional marketplace, your principal, standard, MetLife, Union Central, Met Guardian. MetLife, wow. Guardian, of course, Union Central, yeah. And when you look at these carriers, um, does anyone stand out is it for if, the, if the corporation is or the business is more blue collar in its, in its idea? Is um, one more blue collar than white collar? Standard does a better job with blue collar with blue of collar. the ones I just listed. Mm -hmm. And some of the real blue collar carriers don't have a business overhead expense mm -hmm. product. They're not, because again, not in the professional market. So standard of Oregon, right? Isn't it? Correct. That, so they really have a niche in the blue collar area because not that many play in business overhead. 
Right. Okay. And when you look at these other ones in, in this regard, do you see, is there any one contract that you, stands out to you and say, boy, that, one's, that one seems to give a little more bang for the buck. It's a little more economically viable as a contract. Or are they pretty much all priced they, close? It's really cookie cutter. Some have this substitute salary built in. Mm -hmm. Others have a partial built in. You need to pay extra for the residual, which I'm not a big fan of residual mm -hmm. on a business overhead. And, uh, and is that you don't you don't see that as a bang for the buck kind of item? Um, no, the what the residual? Yeah. No, because it's a different formula than mm -hmm. in your on your individual policy, especially if you have someone seeing patients because mm -hmm. it's a factor of what's your revenue and what's your expenses. If you have somebody mm -hmm. in the business seeing your patients, they're still bringing the revenue in. So you're not really going to have a, a lost mm -hmm. you know, er, revenue, which is, again, the point of bringing someone in to see your patients or clients. Mm -hmm. When I'm thinking of this, I'm buying it, you have to have the disability insurance on first, right? Before you can go to overhead or no, no they're you can completely get standalone. Okay, so I could be buying DI personally from one carrier and buying the overhead because it's got a better policy provision or whatever on another carrier. Absolutely. And have you seen that kind of a mix and match? Oh, certainly. And even when we're quoting, uh, because we'll quote, as you know, multiple carriers mm -hmm. with each product line, and some are just priced better for either the female market or certain occupations, certain ages. So quite often, you know, because they're completely standalone products. Mm -hmm. There are discounts available when you purchase when there's three or more lives, but it won't count for three or more products. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't get a discount if, uh, well, you, a multi-life discount is different than a uh, product line discount. Mm -hmm. Again, sometimes it's advantageous to use the same carrier because they would get a multi-product discount. And so there's a lot of ways to look at this. What's the top cap on this? Is it ten grand? Fifty thousand in the traditional market. Yeah, a month. A month. Fifty thousand a month. That's huge. I mean, that when I think of fifty grand a month to cover it, that's that's serious money. <laughs> I mean, that's six hundred grand. Coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk about prospecting, marketing, how to really pitch DI. It's not really disability. It's not DI. It's paycheck protection. That's what we're talking about. Listen, you can jump on our site at www.brokersalliance.com or write us at the biz at the biz at brokersalliance.com. You're listening to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on business in your practice. We'll be right back. Steve Savant here. For years, I've heard that less than 2% of all term life insurance ends in a claim. That's not many, and clients had to die to receive the benefits. That's the old term insurance. Now start selling the new term insurance. The term insurance that covers your client through a chronic illness, a catastrophic event, or a terminal diagnosis, and pays their monthly premium during extended periods.